Will a CSL DD make you faster? Stay tuned to find out. On January 8th, 2021, my life changed when I ordered my first Fanatic product. which was the McLaren GT3 V2 wheel, and I've loved it ever since. The only issue is it's a little bit difficult to judge an item's value when you only have one third of the full picture. So shortly thereafter, I ordered the CSL Elite pedals, and then finally, I had ordered the CSL DD wheelbase. It was gonna go for CSL Elite. I'm new to the whole Fanatic ecosystem, so direct drive didn't mean anything to me at the time. But when the CSL DD was announced, I quickly got on the pre-order on June 21st, 2021. And it's been kind of a roller coaster since because I've had a series, a plethora of Fanatic products coming in, but still not being able to plug in everything and being able to get it to work. So finally, after 10 months from that first order, I have the CSL DD, and here are my thoughts about it. So when it comes to the CSL DD, I've got a little bit of a pro and a con list per se. The pros are the build quality are fan, you know, in general is fantastic, and the ability to be able to plug in any sort of wheel that you have within the Fanatic ecosystem, whether it be Podium or whether it be CSL or whether it be Club Sport, is really awesome that they all have that same connection point and you don't have to go out and buy weird adapters unless of course you have an a uh, sim lab or an off-brand wheel or you'd want to get the unis universal hub or the podium hub in order to get it to work with the csl dd that being said i've had very little issues with the csl dd itself but i've had issues the the cons on this list are mainly due to compatibility with other products also within the Fanatic ecosystem and potentially it not working out in the best with said other products. So the issues that I've had were, you know, the updating the drivers was fine. The control panel, the Fanatic control panel was incredibly intuitive. It showed me exactly where my wheel was as far as in regards to if that was plugged in, if there are any issues. The one thing that I did notice is I did also buy the um, the booster pack for the CSL DD, and I was figuring that you'd just be able to plug it in right out of the get-go. Turns out you can't. You have to use their standard power supply to update all the drivers, get it all up to date. And then after doing so, you can use your um, booster pack, which I did not find a very intuitive experience. However, you know we got there eventually. That's fine. The other issue that I had is when I thought I had all the drivers updated, all ready to go, it just wouldn't work on games. And what was, what the issue was is that no point of time did Fnatic say, hey, your pedals have to be plugged in to the computer itself via an adapter that isn't included with the pedals. So again, the CSL DD is fine. All of the drivers, all the wheels drivers were updated totally fine. But when I thought I updated the drivers for the pedals, it was saying, no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. You got to plug it in directly. So this is going to be a weird video. You'll see me playing with just the wheelbase and the wheel and no pedals. So we can actually do a follow-up video eventually that will show... Is it actually faster to have pedals, ironically? Or can you do everything on the wheel itself if you, if you have the right wheel? But when it comes to the CSL DD on its own, not including all the issues with the pedals, not including all the issues with the drivers and everything else, when you take the product as is, I played it in both Assetto Corsa Competizione and Forza Horizon 5. Oh my god. It's a fantastic wheel. I cannot say no. I can not say enough. It's just the wheel base itself and the wheel combo. It's just been an outstanding experience moving up from a controller to a wheel base. Um, the controller would just vibrate. You get virtually no information out of it. Like if you're starting to oversteer, 
it'll be like a vibration, but you can't tell any difference between that and when you're going off the road or going in the gravel and whatnot. It's just a, a vague rumble. With the wheelbase, because it's direct drive, you get a lot more information. Um, you can tune it to how you want. You can have, you know, forced feedback at 100%. Like, it'll rattle your table, it'll rattle, like, your entire world, everything falling apart. Or you can do it somewhere in the middle where it's a little bit more reasonable in my mind. But if you are getting the booster pack, I would probably recommend making sure that you're beyond having a desk clamp, that it's more geared towards you know, putting it in an actual sim rig setup. Because with the, the booster pack, and the table clamp in this situation here, it's it rattles quite a bit. So if you are in process of getting a whole sim rig set up, I would probably hold off on the booster pack because the boost at the original power supply, you get still quite a bit of information. It's five newton meters of torque versus eight newton meters of torque. So yeah, you're missing out on three. But that five newton meters to begin with is very detailed. And I think will probably be enough for the time being until you get, you know, that full rig set up. And then you can go ahead and grab the booster pack. So on to the big headline. Are you faster with a CSL DD alone? So I've got my handy dandy Xbox controller. And for those of you who have followed me on the extraneous zone, you'll have seen me starting to do a career with the just an Xbox controller, and you've noticed how many mistakes I've been making, how, it, how it's so difficult to be able to relay information from the game to being able to correct those. So I'll start out by doing a Nürburgring kind of um, practice session get a couple laps in, and then we'll kind of go from there, see how that all works. So again, welcome to the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. I'm in the Lamborghini Huracan right now on very cold tires, I suppose. It seems, the controller, it seems very sensitive. I don't normally remember it being this sensitive, however, we'll just kind of work with it here. So we are currently going into a slide off the track. So after adjusting some settings, we're going to give this another go. So we're going to go down into turn one here. We're going to break around here. And yeah, we're going to go a little bit wide here. Not a big deal. Apart from that part. A lot of the issues that we're having is very cold tires and a rear wheel drive car. I can tell already that we're starting to go out a little bit. So again, third try, third time's the charm. And it's still not doing great. So I'm going to stick this one out here and take it nice and slow. Start seeing if we can just warm up these tires any way, shape, or form that we can because I feel like I am not in control right now. With the cold tires and being a rear-wheel drive car, the back end just is just kind of deciding what it wants to do. One comparison that I can say that I've noticed is between the controller and the wheel is when you start losing grip, you kind of get like a floating feeling, which is a very nice way of saying, hey, you have no traction. You got to get something done. You got to correct something. You got to change something. Otherwise, you're going to be sent into a spin. So I'm just going to go braking under heavy, heavy brakes here going way too much on the brakes purposely to generate enough heat see if we can get those tires really up to temperature because that's my biggest worry right now it's just getting any kind of grip into this vehicle whatsoever to be able to set any remotely decent lap time here so still not a whole lot of grip but we are going up through up to turn 11 here we're going to break right about here say second gear corner I'm still feeling a little bit floaty there. It's it's either the setup or I'm having an issue with the setup or there's an issue with uh, tires still not getting that temperature up to an ideal state. So we're going to go up through turn 13 here. We're going to go flat. I'm going to be a little bit cautious though because again, I don't want to have uh, that loss of grip. So we're going to break at 100. 
turning on into 14 and 15. 14, we are losing it, and 15, we have lost it. So, again, still, still, we're just not getting any temperature or any grip, I should say. It might be up to temperature. I don't know what this car has of yet, but just the lack of grip is just really difficult to, to kind of judge where exactly I am. So we're going to try this lap once again. It's been about five minutes since we started that beginning lap. And just kind of testing the turning here on the straight. It's, I'm still not fully confident here, so it's still going to break very, very, very hard here. I'm going to kind of ease on the gas on the way out. Heavy braking once again. Nice and soft throttle here. Still a little bit squirrely on the way out. Heavy braking once again up through turn three. That was actually four, my apologies. Now out of five. Seemingly doing a little bit better. I'm, I'm a little bit more confident in the temperature and the grip. But it's, it's still not to the point where I'm able to get a flying lap in. Yeah, I started loosening it a little bit there on turn six. Turn seven was pretty nice. So we'll come on down to the U-turn here of turn eight. Up into fifth gear, going to hard onto the brakes. A little bit late there. But already starting to see quite some improvement. Turns out that entire corner, I was doing a little bit of a drift and was still locking into that corner coming on out on the exits. So up through the Michael Schumacher S chicane here, we lost it completely once again. I, I gotta say, there's I think it's gotta be something to do with the setup because this is just not what I remember at all. So after adjusting the setup a little bit, I'm gonna see if we can try this once again. We're going more on a safe setup, so the PSI in the tires is a little bit lower. So hopefully we can get a little bit more grip out of lower PSI here. Tires are still absolutely ice cold. Still very, very loose on turn two here. I feel it's starting to go a little bit. Seemingly able to correct it there. Again, it's just really weird. It's still very difficult to judge exactly everything that's going on. So I want to be able to get a flying lap in, so let me just take some time to warm up these tires. See if we can get a flying lap in whatsoever. So finally we started to see some pretty drastic improvements here. Uh, doing a little bit more uh, adjustments on the settings, and I think it was the steering sensitivity uh, that's moving up to 100% instead of like 60 or whatever percent. Yes, I'm missing the corner, but that's all right. I still at least feel in control. Uh, the thing that I've also noticed as well is on coming out of the corner, I think this also is just a little bit of a realistic point of view, a little bit hard to judge with the uh, controller, though, is on the exit of corners, you really want to just kind of gradually turn in or push in your throttle. Because if you just lay on it, if you just play it like Need for Speed or play it like Forza, and just immediately slam on the throttle and slam on the brakes, you're going to have a worse time because it's just immediately going to spin the back wheels, you're going to lose all grip, and you're just going to go out in a spin. The other thing, too, uh, is that with a set of Corsa, you really got to have precise steering. So I'm just making very minute adjustments on the joystick here. And the other issue that I was noticing before is if I did, like, full-on, full-in... Um, steering, it would start to really kick the back end out. So we're going to try to avoid that if we can and take things a little bit more cautiously and versus something that I would have normally done here. So coming down into turn four once again, really getting that inside there, not quite hitting the curbs, same thing here, and we're going to spin a little bit here, but that's all right. In one of these days, we're actually going to get a flying lap on a controller, but again, normally it's this game is playable with controller. I've done it before. <laughs> this is really not proving my point, is it, here today? 
No, I've played this game many times before on a controller, and you can have genuine racing going on, but again, it's just... With the lack of information, it's you really can't tell when you're really starting to spin out or when you've put too much power down or when your steering angle is just a little bit too much for the car to handle. All right, so as a tester, well, it's going to be our flying lap. As a tester, when I was trying out the wheel on a set of courts, uh, I want to say that I was able to get to about 207. So that's going to be our... A little bit of our goal here, if we can hit that here. See if we can get a 207, but currently, uh, because we've had so many issues, we've only been able to do about a 234 here. I already start feeling that I'm losing it, but it's going to cost us a second, I'd want to say. So I feel like that's going to at least put us in the 210 range at <laughs> minimum. Every time I start thinking that I have a all right run here, then it's as soon as I start commentating, we start having issues here. So bear with me on this one here. I'm going to come down here. We're going to break around here. I'm going to ease on the throttle on the way through. Not too tight of a quartering angle, not too tight of the throttle. Bring it up into third, and without shifting, we're going to break. Bring it on through turn 9, a little bit hairy through turn 10 was all right. Bring it up to almost 5th gear and brake a little bit early. Every time I've done that corner, I've broke about 100. And I just go straight off into the runoff. So as for a cautious run... I think it's the best one yet so far. Gonna come up through turn 11, no, 14 and 15. Shifting down during a corner is probably one of the most dangerous things that you can do. That'll immediately make your back end go. Oh, come on. A little bit of a drift through the exit here, and we have a 210. Finally, personal fastest. So with all that information that we've taken from that last lap, let's see if we can apply it here. We're going to go a little bit far. Instead of doing second gear, we're going to go all the way to first. Around turn two here. We're going to go up to three and immediately back down to two. Get in on turn four. And five is a little bit wide, and we spin out because I was trying to remember what names of the little turns it was. So one thing that I've also been noticing, too, is with the amount of times that you start running off, I believe that your, your tires are getting covered in kind of the wet grass, or more or less not being able to put the right amount of grip down. So with that being said, I think a lot of the issue is coming from the standpoint that when you're hitting the apex of a corner, when you're going up on the curbs... You really can't tell when you're going over the curbs. And with a wheel, you definitely can. Um, with the controller, all you're getting is just constant level of minute vibrations. And none of it is really telling you, hey, this wheel over here, you're actually in the grass now. So you're, as soon as you hit the tarmac, once again, once you come off of that curb, you're going to lose a lot of that grip. And again, I'm constantly on the curbs, and I can't tell when I'm on them or when I'm off of them. And the curbs themselves, much like the grass, is insanely slippery. So you have to be super, 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 super careful with that. Coming down to turn eight, so this is probably one of the best runs that we had so far. We're already a second and almost a half down. And again, right here, I'm more or less just listening to audio cues because I'm pretty sure that entire time I was on that curb, I don't know though. Was I? Was it not? Can't really tell. So I felt the back end going out of turn 9 there. I was able to recover it in turn 10. We're going to go out to about here. So just a hair before 100. That was actually one of the best breaks on that corner yet. And right here, 
I'm surprised we didn't spin out there because I believe both tires on the right hand side were both over the curb into the grass and right there I was kind of aiming for just barely touching the curb I think I was very well into it here again very difficult to tell positioning with the controller Somehow he's able to save that. I'm not sure how. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. No, that was the best lap yet. Ah. I'm going to try just one more time. I'm not going to bother on just constantly trying to beat that 210 because I think that probably will be the best one yet. Unless if I'm able to pull out a hat trick here. So again, in coming into turn one, going to go all the way down to first gear. Going to go onto the outside of turn two. This spot here at the top of the hill just really feels like that you lose a lot of grip very quickly. Not doing a fantastic run through yet. We're going to go into turn three here. Still a little bit awkward. Turn four. This is actually five. No, that was four. This is turn five. No, six. I don't know anything anymore. And yet I'm still doing better. But I do know for a fact this is turn eight and we're already half a second down. Still don't feel like it's enough to get into the wheelbase territory if I'm honest. Yep, I'm right onto the grass here this entire time. We're going to go up an extra gear, get that extra speed. We're very losing it there. Probably shifted gears a little bit too early there, and we're going to go here. Down to second gear, going to touch the apex if we can. We're losing it. And we're going to break here without moving up a gear. Good exit on the way out of turn 12, going up through turn 13, go from outside to inside, back to outside, and bring back onto here. Going to break at the 100, break, break, down gear, down gear, second gear, we're losing it. Very little grip in that spot here. In this spot, we are just always, always just lifting off, just feeling that those back tires going wide and the last one I don't know where we lost all the time because I was just doing that last corner like we always do and yet suddenly I just lost like half a second so at that point I'm going to call it very unimpressed with my performance here normally with the controller I've seen myself do a lot better uh, this normally with these kind of tests, I would just immediately go to Monza. I've done Monza a lot. I'm very familiar with that track, but instead of having that, um, that advantage for the controller over the wheelbase, I wanted to do a little bit something different here. So Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit with the controller 210 and 0.431. All right, so here's how this is going to work. I'm actually going to disconnect my wheel so you guys can see exactly what's going on. So with the McLaren V2 wheel, you've got your shifters up here, and you've actually got these extra little, I believe that they would actually be meant for your clutches, per se. In this situation, I'm actually going to do the shifting with the top paddles, as you would. But with these bottom little clutch paddles those are actually going to be my accelerator and my brake so this is going to be the weirdest test i've ever done here i'm going to move this out of the way because i 100 percent am going to be bonking it like nobody's business here so my apologies if my audio goes a little bit weird probably going to have to really boost it in post so first gear i'm going to bring it on out so already we're being notified to stay away from the curbs, as you probably would. We're going to go brake, going to go brake. So with this corner, it's one of the most difficult corners with this setup here because my arms are having to do these weird contortions to be able to stay, like to be able to continue putting pressure on the throttle and on the brakes. 
while I'm doing these these very difficult corners. So again, this is not the ideal setup at all. But the weirdest thing is, is through all of that, I would have slid out at least twice on the controller setup, and I'm not sure why. As you can tell, my tires are very low pressure, very little air pressure in them, very cold as well. And I'm able to correct this with no issue. I, I want to make this as fair as a comparison as I possibly can, but for whatever reason, the controller it's just a completely different situation. It hasn't been in the past, and for this test, I really do apologize, but I'm still not able to figure out why the controller is as weird as it is. But so far, I feel comfortable. I'm talking, I'm not having an issue getting my point across, you know, while I'm making these... I'm not going to say the best racing line. Like, I probably shouldn't have shifted up there. But a lot of the information that I'm getting here is just kind of the second nature to driving. The thing that I am finding an issue is, is especially with Forza when I was testing it out, is trying to gauge what rembles meant from one another when it was that you're losing, when you're losing your grip versus when you're just going, you know, hitting a curb versus when you're um, <laughs> in the dirt. So here we go. I'm just going to continue commentating while doing a flying lap. I already feel like that I've got enough pace of being able to make a pretty decent lap here. I'm going to go a little bit wide here. Not going to quite hit the curbs, but we're going to go break here. Kind of lunge on into the inside. Go up and then come back down probably break a little bit too much break once again I'm going to go wide and it validates the lap time I still feel like even with that invalidated lap time it's still going to be massively improved over the controller coming on down through seven go up to third go up to fourth up to fifth a little bit early on fifth there, but then we're going to break right about here. I think technically that was a little bit more early than what I've normally done. However, that seemed like it worked out quite nicely. Almost up to fourth, but we're going to just tap the brakes a little bit there. Again, I'm just feeling so much more confident in my ability here versus the controller. Because with the controller, like, you've got to do these really weird, precise little twitches at the thumbstick do in order to get, like, the most precise racing line. And it's just not how it's meant. Like, the controller was not meant to have those very precise angles. It's more or less meant for games like Need for Speed where you can just absolutely shove the joystick over entirely to one direction and all the way over to the other side. Like when you're drifting, you're doing the bouncing back and forth on the joystick. So not a great lap time. It was 2.11, but when I did this earlier, I was able to get down to 2.07. So let's really focus here, see if we can really get that lap time. So I'm going to go very into the inside here. Gonna go up to second, we're gonna break. Feather on that throttle, ease it on the way through. Gonna go up to third, gonna go back down to second. Touch the apex of turn three. Down a little bit into turn four, out of turn five. Coming up to turn six, fourth gear, down two gears. A little bit early on that one, if I'm honest. lock up the brakes a little bit. We're going a little bit wide around the curbs. However, the curbs did not take our grip, thankfully. 
Running up to fifth gear onto the turn eight. Just kind of branded on through. Still feeling like going a little bit wide again. Touching the curbs there. Bring it up to third gear. Break here on the entrance there of turn nine. Bring it up through turn ten. Touching the curbs on the right side here. Bring it up to fourth gear. Break a little bit early, what I felt like. However, that was perfect for that racing line. Break once again into turn 12. Kind of feathering the throttle a little bit there. Up to fourth, up through fifth. Can we touch the apex of turn 13? Yes, we can. And we're going to break at about 100. Looking for those cones on the inside of 14 and 15. Going to go up to third. We're going to break down to second gear. Again, feathering the throttle up through 16. Two oh nine. That felt decent. That felt very good. That was almost it felt like almost a two oh seven. That's alright. I feel like a lot of the time here could be made up. This is the problem with our setup here. There are a couple of points where I probably could have changed up to get that extra little bit of power. I'm ideally thinking... <clears throat> I'm ideally thinking through uh, going up to turn 11. No, excuse me. It's going up to turn 9. I've always just hit the top revs of third gear when ideally I should be uh, probably going up into fourth because that extra time instead of hitting the top of three, I can really just stretch out the car's legs a little bit more, get that extra couple of tenths while I'm at a higher speed that third gear won't allow. So here, let's put it into practice here. So we're going to second, and then we're going to go up through third. But when we do that, we're going to have to break and bring it down to third. And we lost it. Okay, that's all right. Hit the curb. I already invalidated the lap anyway, so that's all right. <laughs> so I'm going to try to recreate our best lap as best as possible here. Just trying to get ourselves prepared for going over that start-finish line as fast as we possibly can. So as far as I'm concerned, our flying lap already started. There we go. Ah! Not a great exit, but uh, we'll see how we do here. Can we break at 100? Okay, coming through turn two, we're a little bit wide. And we're a little bit late on our time. That's all right. Out of turn five. Doing all right. Coming up through turn six. Break through turn seven. All I see in my peripherals is just the, our, our time going up and down between. Is that our fastest? Is that not our fastest? We've already down half a second. So I feel like we're doing quite all right this lap. There we are. So let's put my theory in play. Let's go up to fourth gear, but then bring it down to third. We're already up. Almost a whole second. And there we go. Full second. Come on, on through 13. And then we'll drop it again. 
A little bit uh, too much there. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna drop it once again. Ooh, that's close. Ooh, so close to 207. Ugh. I want to see how close we can get this. Nope, and we lost it. We're still technically ahead, though. Huh. Absolutely shocking of a turn three, four, five area. And yet we might still have it. Fourth gear, let's maybe not go to third gear. <sighs> Ooh, look at that. Get up to fifth gear and then two, three. Wow, we just shaved nearly a whole second off. More than that. So apparently that's uh, the Michael Schumacher 7-8 chicane. 7, 8, sorry, 9, 10 chicane. Who am I talking about? This is actually a fourth gear corner. Who would have thought? I'm just going to park it up here. So that, that right there, I mean, the one thing that people have been talking about is they, people who have reviewed the wheelbases have been very careful to say it won't make you faster. But the point that they really push is that it makes you more consistent. And that's the thing that I can definitely 100% agree on, is that that consistency of being able to race however many laps and be able to feel everything that's going on when, you're, when your back end is starting to lose grip a little bit more. Again, like with the controller, you got various rumbles. What do they mean? I don't know. But the controller was not designed for sim racing. It just wasn't. It was designed for all-encompassing of being able to do, like, first-person shooters, you know, RPGs, and platformers, you know, general speak generally speaking racing games, and then all including, like, Mario Kart or those, those fun arcade more racing games versus sim racing. So, when you go from a controller that wasn't meant for racing, but meant for multiple use cases... And then you make a device, the wheelbase, you know, the steering wheel, all of that. And you design it to make it as close to real life racing as you can get it. Well, of course you're going to be more consistent on your lap times. I would argue that you would be faster on a wheelbase. I mean... Point proven. I knocked off four seconds. But the fine line, the, the final point that I want to make here is if you're really into racing and you're going from a controller to a wheelbase or to a steering wheel of some flavor, get a Thrustmaster. Get a Logitech. Don't go into 
fanatic or fanatic quite yet. Get comfortable with, you know, that consistency. But as soon as you've saved enough money and you've pre-ordered this, knowing that it might take six months to a year for you to finally get it, in hopes that our shipping crisis resolves itself, I wouldn't go uh, CSL DD quite yet. You know, again, if you're starting with a controller, get a Thrustmaster. Because they're on hand, they're in the stock. Like, that entire system, wheel-based steering wheel and pedals, is cheaper than just this wheel. So, keeping that all in mind, the, the root of it all is what's your budget. So if you want to spend all sorts of money, sure. Get a fanatic wheelbase. Get get the um, get the club sport pedals. Get the you know whatever wheel that you please. It's going to take a long time to get there, and throughout that entire time, while you're waiting for it, you're just going to be racing on a controller, and it's not really that feasible. So that being said, are you faster with the CSL DD? Most likely, you're getting a lot more information out of the wheel. You can tell exactly what's going on a lot easier. But with the controller, as you saw, like uh, there would be random times that I would just I'd spin out. There would be random times that I would I would just lose it. I couldn't tell when I was losing it. And with the CSL DD, I was able to have a full conversation with you guys, and it just felt more natural. So that all being said, that is my first impressions of the CSL DD. Thank you all for watching again. Like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. We got a lot coming up, and I'm very excited to share it all with you. So, again, thanks so much. I hope you have a good one. So, take care. Bye.